Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. So a few videos ago, I taught you how to make something called a Slayer Exciter. And the Slayer Exciter is basically a high frequency, high voltage oscillator that allows you to light up these little fluorescent light bulbs from a few inches away. It also allows you to draw some pretty cool arcs. It lights up when you put it close. Well, this Slayer Exciter, as great as it was, was completely underpowered and inefficient. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to custom design and build your own circuit board so that way you can build your own Slayer Exciter that will work a lot better than this simple circuit because it will have uh, some complex circuitry on it and will allow the Slayer Exciter to have uh, a better oscillator and will allow it to make the light bulbs light up from farther distances. Now we're going to want to build a circuit board for our little Slayer Exciter device but in order to build a circuit board you first need to know the circuit and how it works. So this is the schematic that we're going to use to build this uh, Slayer Exciter circuit. So right here I've actually uh, taken out this transformer because it didn't like making the circuit board of it. But right here is where the primary coil of the transformer will go. And here's where the feedback coil, which is the bottom part of the Tesla coil. So if we take a look at this, we have this main chip in the middle. Now this is a MOSFET driver chip. It takes an input from the input and it gives a non-inverting output that drives the gate of the MOSFET. Because the gates of the MOSFETs like to draw a lot of current. This 10K resistor is just to drain the gate. We also have a resonant capacitor right here, and this capacitor will help the coil resonate at a better frequency, and that'll save it uh, power and make it more energy efficient. So these two diodes here are to clamp the voltage that are coming in from this feedback, because this feedback's at the lower end of the high voltage secondary coil. And so this voltage is going to be relatively high. And so we use these two diodes not only just to rectify the current, but also to clamp the voltage so that way it doesn't destroy this transistor. Now, the original circuit called for uh, TC4429, and the TC4429 is an inverting chip, and this is non-inverting. So I had to put an inverting buffer right here, which consists of a 2N3904 transistor and a 3.8K resistor. So that will cause the input in here to be inverted and the output to be inverted. That'll help it drive. The MOSFET that I'm using is an IRFP250. So when the signal comes in from the feedback coil, it'll be inverted by this inverting buffer and kind of amplified to feed the IRFP250 MOSFET. And that'll uh, start switching on and off to drive the coil of the Tesla coil. So this is the entire circuit and how it works. Now if you notice, I'm using Easy EDA. Now this is a pretty cool online circuit design and I'll share my circuit in the description. But Easy EDA lets you actually design your circuit uh, normally like this and you have access to all their parts that they have in their online store which is pretty cool too. Now the cool thing about Easy EDA is you can actually take your circuit diagram and convert it into an actual PCB just by clicking a few buttons like a convert project to PCB. So this is the PCB of my project. As you can see it looks really cool. So right here what I've done is I've imported this and used the auto router function right here to draw all the circuit lines where they need to go and I've also had to place all the components. Now if you look here you can see the driver IC, the MOSFET where the capacitor will go, the transistor, the large electrolytic capacitor and everything else. And as you can see all the copper has already been filled in and stuff and these are the traces. So it's pretty cool how well this works. Now. You can either take this uh, PCB and directly import it to the Easy EDA circuit uh, board building thing. And what that'll do is it'll uh, actually let you have them design your circuit board and mail them to you. But if you don't want to do that, you can just come here and you can go to export and you can save this as a PDF file, which you can directly print using a toner printer onto a piece of paper. Okay, so now after you have your circuit board already, you have it printed out on a piece of photo paper, and you have your piece of copper clad board cut out and taped to it. You can sit it down with the piece of paper facing down. You can then take an iron and use the iron to heat up the board. Okay, now let's see how this turned out. I really hope it turned out well. 
so far it looks like all the toner is still on. I'll need to do it a little longer. Okay, so I think it's good now. So let's slowly and carefully take off the board. Whoa. That looks cool. I think it worked. Yes, that looks nice. Okay, so now what I've done with this circuit board is I've kind of fixed a little bit of issues with it with some uh, Sharpie marker. Because there were some places where the toner didn't completely transfer. I don't think I left uh, the iron on it long enough. Anyway, it looks pretty good for what it is. So we're going to ferric chloride etch away all the shiny copper that's showing right here, leaving just all the black stuff. I'm then going to take a little container full of steaming water. You can probably see the steam rising off it. I've just microwaved this for about a minute and a half. And when I put the ferric chloride inside there, the water will surround the ferric chloride and start to heat it up. This will make the reaction go faster. I can then take the circuit board that has been uh, toner transferred and I can drop it in the ferric chloride solution. This will etch away all of the copper that's not covered in toner. Just move that around a little bit. There we go. Everything's submerged. So now I'll just leave this for a little while and when I come back, hopefully it should be etched. Okay, it looks like the circuit board's done. Let's wash it off. Oh. And clean off all of the toner. So the toner is made of plastic, and acetone dissolves plastic, so it's the perfect medium for removing all the toner. I'll just rub it a little bit. You can see the toner starts coming right off. Well, here you go. Here's the finished circuit board. It looks really nice. There's a little bit of places where it didn't, where it etched through the uh, stuff, but that's fine because this looks really nice, especially with all the toner removed. You can see that there's a lot of copper, which means it didn't use up very much of the ferric chloride. And as far as I can tell, all the traces are still intact. I'll have to test that with a multimeter, but I'm pretty sure they are. So now is the difficult task. It's the task of trying to drill through all the holes in this board so the components can be mounted. So I'm going to do that with a Dremel. Well, now, as you can see, my circuit board is all done. All the holes have been filled in using a little tiny Dremel bit. And the uh, holes for the MOSFET have been enlarged because the MOSFET is actually larger than the other components. But here you go. That is the final printed circuit board. It looks really nice. As you can see, all the holes have been made very well inside the circuit board. It looks kind of cool. So I'm going to take the circuit board now, and I'm going to solder in all the components that are needed into these holes that I made with the Dremel. Now in order to do this, I'm going to have to follow this uh, layout of the circuit board because I don't have a silk screen on this top because I didn't have time to do that and this is kind of the prototype. And so I'll use this as kind of my virtual silk screen so that way I can know where to place all the different components and where to place them because right here it's kind of hard to know. All you see is just a bunch of holes. Alright, so after you have your circuit board all completed, uh, you don't have to do this part but what I did is I wrote where all the components would go so it would make it easier when I place them all because I didn't have a silk screen. Well anyway, these are all the components. I got all these components from LCSC. So let's start putting them. Now because the circuit board is already prefabricated on the bottom, it's going to make it very easy to insert all the components. All you have to do is push them through the holes like that and solder the bottom. I didn't mention this before, but it's also helpful to use some flux on your circuit board when you're trying to insert the components and solder it, because it's never been soldered or tinned before. So you can just take a tissue or something and kind of get some flux on it. And you can use that flux and you can wipe it on the board. Okay, so now after you have all the components installed, you're going to need to trim off the excess leads from the bottom. You can do this easily 
using a pair of wire snips. I've been having trouble with this circuit board. So somewhere inside here there's a short. And I have inspected all of these traces of the magnifying glass and I cannot seem to find the short at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up to my uh, 55 amp power supply, 12 volts. I'm going to turn it on and hopefully our short will blow up. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now I've got the circuit working. There was just a short somewhere inside there that I didn't see. So after I remove the short with that high amperage power supply, it works. So I'll fire this up. And the weird thing is you kind of have to jump start it by touching the uh, feedback line. But anyway, if I put this light near it, you can see the light lights up when it gets close to the coil. It also lights up when I put it right here. You can see a little spark jump to it. But the thing is, this isn't as powerful as the Tesla coil I had before. I mean, it still lights up and it's still pretty cool. But the weird thing is, if I actually touch the light bulb to the coil, it, it, it uh, bottoms it out on power. And I'm not sure why that is. Something may be happening with the feedback circuit. Maybe I need to put a resistor there. I'm not sure. But it needs to be fixed. As you can see, the light does light up pretty good when it's inside here. It wirelessly lights up. So this little coil is pretty cool. It can light up light bulbs from relatively far away. They start glowing at about three inches away. But this still isn't that great. I could do better. But that's what I have for now. So I think I'm going to work on improving my driver circuit. So that way it'll work better. Now I actually had to disconnect the transistor inside that circuit because the transistor was causing it to always be on for some reason. So I just bypassed the transistor. So it was a different type of circuit. And it started working kind of, like what I just showed you. But I know I can do better, but that's something for a different video. And probably my next video, I'll be working on trying to build another circuit board that can run one of these Tesla coils at super high currents, at super high voltages, so I can get the best efficiency out of them. So hopefully I can have a Tesla coil that can give out huge sparks. It would be pretty cool. Well, anyway, Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about the toner transfer method of circuit board etching, which is pretty cool, and I hope you learned something about how a Tesla coil works and how you can build one. So stay tuned for my next video where I will be showing you how to build one of these Slayer Exciter circuits better. As always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for next time.